Welcome to our last field blog from Barrow. This is us uh, taking our trip out to the ice. Uh, we flew out on a Bell helicopter about 100 miles north of Barrow and we just flew until we found a good patch of ice. We had a lot of fun on the helicopter. The pilots were really great. This is Dick getting out of the helicopter. It's a little bit difficult when you have these huge massive boots on and right now the rotors are still uh, going around as well so you have to keep your head down. The pilots are just checking that everything is good for them to turn off the rotors. Uh, we were, first thing we did was to pick a good piece of ice within view of the pilots uh, to start digging our holes to deploy our instrumentation. And here Dick and I are just discussing that I think this is a good spot, that we have enough room um, to do what we want to do. And uh, Dick's just going to pace out about 10 meters just to make sure that uh, the radius that we want to do all of our work in is, is within this nice patch of first year ice. And you can see the ridges surrounding this patch of ice where the ice flows have been pushed together and the ice has been ridged up so and perfect. those ridges can be uh, several meters thick and yeah. we don't want to work there, we want to work on this nice flat piece of first year ice. First thing to do is to unpack the helicopter. You can see Mike, our bear guard there, setting up with his gun. <laughs> we were really excited that uh, we found a good patch of ice. It was such a lovely day. Yeah, mostly we need this side. Here's the mechanic, and he started to unload the cargo bay. And that That's big, uh, two big boxes are the buoy, which is the first thing, uh, pretty much the first thing that we take out of the helicopter. Yeah, I'll get that out of the way. There's my uh, ice core coming off in the big, big red case. This is going to take three of us. And together this buoy is about over 200 pounds. So there's three or four of us who lifted it down out of the helicopter bay. And it's sitting on a sledge so that we can pull it away from the helicopter to the location that we want to deploy from. Perfect. You can see that we really stuffed the helicopter. We were. We weren't uh, at the weight limit, we were definitely at the uh, volume limit of that cargo bay. Dick's carrying the HyperPro there that measures light. First of all, we look down at how much snow we had, uh, dig the snow off the surface, and then we can start to drill our holes with the powered ice auger. It takes two of us to do this. Uh, there's a lot of vibration to get it started, just like starting your lawnmower and then get it balanced between us and and start drilling. Here's Mike just giving us some advice, seeing as he's done this many times. The ice was actually pretty hard, much harder than the ice we went to practice off, the landfast ice just off of the Umiak base. So it took us a bit longer to get through than what we'd practice with. The ice is harder because it's colder. Yeah. So we drilled three holes and then we walked over to take a look at whether we thought this was going to be um, big enough for deploying um, some of our instruments through. Once we clear the rest of the slush and the snow off from around our holes, you have to scoop out all the slush. So we're using what looks like a big pasta drainer there. You can see we had about 20 or so centimeters of snow on top, which means that right now there's not a whole lot of sunlight getting um, through that ice cover. So we drilled these three holes, but we actually need the holes to kind of be connected into one large hole that's wide enough to put whatever in instruments through. So what Dick is doing here is using an ice saw to cut away the thin wedge of ice that's left between those three ice holes making sure that he has the, the handle piece of rope around his wrist so he doesn't just let it fly. So here we are just cutting away the ice between the holes. It takes a few minutes. That looks 
good. Yeah, and then we're just getting the slush and the big bits of ice out of the hole so we can see if this okay. is going to work for us. Get the slush out of that. We got two holes. Now one. Yeah, it cut right through. There's the piece of ice that we cut away between the two holes. And then it slips out of my fingers and I drop it back in. Right back sure, yeah. in. <laughs> okay, before you... getting my microphone sorted out. What you've just seen us do is cut the holes through which we're going to deploy a sensor that will measure light. And then after we've done that, we're gonna put the buoy down and that's what we're gonna leave behind. And we've landed on this pretty biggish piece of um, first year ice amongst some ice ridges. I'll take you for a bit of a tour later. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna get back to work. Now that we've completed the ice holes, we can try and deploy an instrument that we're just going to profile, that's going to give us a light profile. And this instrument, we're going to just uh, take it down and then bring it back up and take it home with us. This is not going to be left on the ice. Here we are just putting it down. You can see the light sensors looking up. We can see the pilots and the mechanic having a cup of tea while we're working. Now, unfortunately, the video ran out while we were deploying the buoy. Um, but what you can see is um, once we've deployed it, the surface float, that's the big white, uh, the round thing we're standing next to. And you can see the just see the white tether um, coming out of the buoy. And that has all the sensors on it. And that's now uh, down through the ice and into the water below. After we had uh, got the buoy deployed, we were then ready to start collecting ice cores uh, so that I could melt them and have a look at the absorbing materials within the ice. What we did is again we took the auger and we uh, drilled down, but instead of drilling all the way through to the water underneath, we just drilled uh, about a metre down. The ice is about a metre and a half thick. This enabled us to uh, use the ice corer to then collect the very bottom of the ice core and the reason why we use the power core first is because it's quicker and then you can see here Dick using the ice corer to take the last few samples out uh, then it was time to leave we jumped on the helicopter and uh, you can see we were pretty happy at a job well done uh, this is myself and Mike the bear guard and just a, a view of the ice on the way back you can see how those very white flat pieces are the first year ice and the ridges um, in between are where those ice flows have come together.